Not that I want to be arrogant, think that you don't know these things. I simply want you to look at the sheet that was passed out to you. And in my introduction here, I want to talk to the young men in America today about how to be a strong man. And in the process, I am talking to the ladies. Amen. There is an area that God has assigned to you. Right. No man can take your place. Amen. I don't think anybody would want to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it centers around Mary and the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, so you have an exclusive role, ladies, in the home. And I'm not saying you can't manage a job or you can't do what men do. That's not the issue that we're dealing with here this morning. Men, uh, you want to be a strong man. God says in the Word, basically, as you read from Matthew chapter 1, and we read it earlier today, and, and we read it in such a way that you can take, take it home with you, but make sure you transfer it over to your Bible. And uh, in Matthew chapter 1, and also in the book of Luke, we talk about the fact that uh, Joseph was a very strong man. And how do you become a strong man? Well, the insert that I gave to you will speak volumes to you if you simply look at the pictures. For this is a lighthouse. And at the foot of the lighthouse, although you can't see it as if you could see it if I put it up on the screen and I'm not able to put that up there this morning. So I'm basically going to go with the notes that I've passed out to you. Next Sunday, hopefully we'll have it changed around and I've got a brother who's going to come in and try to help us here. And we also need electrical outlets around the pulpit here, I, all of these wires, bringing them from home and stringing them up. Uh, that's not the pastor's job. No, you're right. Amen. Somebody else can do that much better than I can. I'm here to share with you the word of God, what God has prepared me to share with you with a passion and with love and not in any way trying to beat you over the head. But what we have in the picture this morning is we must recognize who is Jesus. All of Christianity centers around the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. We had some inserts here. I hope you have one. But if you don't, uh, we'll get along without them. And this picture that we see is Christ is the rock upon which the church is built. Christ is the rock. He is the solid rock. And if you'll build your life upon him, I guarantee you everything is going to go well for you in life. For upon this rock, he tells us, in uh, Matthew 16, 18, I will build my church. Jesus is building his church. And no man can stop it. And he's the commander and chief yes. in the construction of his church. And uh, it's encouraging to be on the side with him. Amen. Trying to help build up uh, one another in the things of our Lord Jesus Christ. Had my dad been around home, I probably wouldn't be in ministry today. I'm, I'm reaching my 52nd year of, of uh, trying to preach the word of God and trying everything that I can do to learn how to do it better. So you pray for me. Amen? Amen. I had a young man to come to our class 10 years ago. He just drifted into a Tuesday night Bible class. 
And then he came back and then he brought his wife and he sat and he worshiped with us for a number of years. That young man has paid for my radio program out of his pocket. He sends a check to this church, not only to pay for the radio program, but he sends a check for this church to help us pay our light bills and our gas bills. And there's another friend of mine who helped to support this radio program. You know him, but I'm not going to call his name. He sends his money directly to the radio station to try to see to it that the voice of God goes out over Fort Wayne, Indiana and reaches into the homes and communities of people who will never don the door of this church. I hope you are on board trying to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. in our world and in our community. Yes. I've never called this individual's name. I won't call his name. I'm grateful to God for his support Amen. and encouragement. And he just drifted into a Tuesday night Bible class yes. 10 years ago. Yes. And so I'm, I'm grateful to God. I, I need your help. I, yes, I need your support Amen. in all of that. But Christ is saying, I will build my church. This tower also talks about Jesus is the light of the world. And if there are two things that you ought to say in your daily experience and devotional experience, Jesus is building his church. And he's dependent upon me to help to build it up. Jesus is. And Jesus is the light. Amen? Oh, Jesus yes, Lord. is the light, the light of the world. Yes, he is. Whoever uh, believes in me, Jesus said, shall not walk in darkness, yes. but he shall have the light of life. Yes. I hope you're walking in the light that Jesus talks about as you live for the Lord Jesus Christ. John 8, 12 says that. Jesus said to them, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And in John 4, as he talks to a woman at the well, a woman there who had lost her way in life, wondering who, or who she should worship. And Jesus said to him, to her rather, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that's talking to you, uh, you would have said to me, give me of uh, 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 this, give me a drink. Uh -huh. And I would have given to you, what sis? Stop it now. <laughs> I would have given to you what? <laughs> Living water. You never have to come back to this well hey, to man. draw water again. If you simply would seek me and ask me to come into your life yes. and to save you and to... <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Come on, Thank Come you, on. Lord. Yeah, he said, I would have given you this living water. That, friends, that water is available to you. Amen. Wherever you are, Amen. whatever your circumstances, I don't care what your history was, yes. what you did yesterday. Yes. You, may, you may have just gotten out of prison, right. just murdered somebody. Amen. In my tenure year, I've gone up to testify to people who had murdered people and, right. and, the, and the board of clemency listened to me. Amen. 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 The man got out. So it doesn't matter where you are. Yes, Lord. Some in prostitution. Yes, Lord. Others murderers, thieves, yes. robbing people. Yes. Amen? Yes. Doesn't matter what your background is or where you've come from. Amen. There is available to you this living water yes. that comes from Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. I hope you know what I'm talking about. I'm yes, Pastor. you would have you would have asked of me, and I would have given it to you. He would have given to you the living water. I tasted those waters at twelve. Come on now, <laughs> Richland, Mississippi. Yes. Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church one Thursday night 
Reverend Kimball stepped up to the plate and quoted Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Shall be saved, shall be delivered, shall be born again. Shall be saved if you'll believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that's my invitation to you here this morning. And men, listen. If you don't know how to treat the girl, Amen. then I want to encourage you this morning. I hope you got the notes. If you didn't, uh, I, 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 I want to take off from the book of Luke and uh, reading the lesson that we read this morning. Thank you, Omari, for leading us. Thank you, Reverend Howard, for doing what you do. Amen. We got some great men around yes, us. Yes, Great men. Thank you. Thank God for you. Thank you. Thank God for you. Step up to the plate. Come to those Bible classes. We won't hurt you. This play won't hurt you. I tell you, you'll learn something about the judges. You'll learn something about sinful nature of mankind. It's still at work in human beings today. It didn't just stop. It's still going on. Amen? But, uh, 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 Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, we're reading from Luke. Yeah. Luke, Luke uh, 127. To a virgin. Now, what is a virgin? The one that has never been touched. One that has never been touched. Thank you, sister. <laughs> Dorothy, you trained that girl well. <laughs> yeah. To a virgin, it's, the word is parthenon. And uh, when you go to Greece and Rome, you know that you see the hill up there uh, called the Virgin Hill, but that was idolatry and that kind of thing. But to a woman who had never known a man, Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that, right? Uh, at least 7, 14. Yes. For the Lord himself will give you a sign for a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Yes. Yeah, Jesus in the New Testament interprets it for us. God is with us. God walks with you when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And here Luke takes this as he is writing concerning Mary to a virgin but a virgin who is betrothed. Mm -hmm. What do you mean betrothed? Lord bless the word to your people today. <laughs> Keep us alert. <laughs> Maybe just not waste our time here, but speak to our hearts. Amen. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So you're going to ask me, huh? Reverend Aiden, how much did you pay for Sylvia? <laughs> None of your business. <laughs> I, I went in to talk with Mr. Hines. Then I'd driven all the way to Philadelphia, you know, to Williamstown, New Jersey. And I drove in there and he says, uh, uh, I said, well, I'd like to talk to you uh, today. He said, well, come on in the room, in the living room. Sat down by the fireplace. And I said, uh, I would really like to have your daughter to be my wife. Amen. I'd like to take her as my wife. Yeah. And he looked at me <laughs> you know, with that frown on his face. <laughs> he said, uh, I'll give her to you only on one condition. And we had to talk about that one condition. <laughs> he said, I don't ever want you to put your hands on her. I said, well, I've never done that. She didn't tell you I slapped her. No. He said, if you don't want her, bring her back to me. Amen. Now, Sylvia and I had to discuss that matter. <laughs> I want her. I love her. We've spent 49 years Amen. together. Amen. Amen. Looking Amen. forward to our 50th wedding anniversary Amen. next year. And I want you to go out of your way to come and support the, 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 the traditional family. Right. Yeah. 
And so I had to talk to her about that. I said, now, honey, now, now you can't run home to daddy every time you have a disagreement. <laughs> you know, every time that, that uh, you don't get everything you want, you can't switch off to daddy. I mean, we have to learn how to work this thing out ourselves as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I kind of convinced her. And, and you know how I convinced her? I convinced her by living for Jesus Christ. I convinced her by letting her know that I am not going to take advantage of you. And I didn't. We went to the altar. Amen. The way God says you ought to go to the altar. I didn't try to take advantage of her. Amen. Some of these guys, now they come with the, with the hippie walk. I don't know how it is. <laughs> You know, they hit walk. And listen, they'll sell you a bill of goods in a yes, minute, yes, young lady. Yes, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't watch it. Yes, right. When I was in Cleveland, we call it the cootie walk. <laughs> 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 yeah. Bouncing and all that stuff and putting out those good, charming words to her. And, and boy, a woman will fall for a, a love story. That's one thing about her. She'll fall for a love story. <laughs> so I said, uh, I'm not going to ever mistreat you. Uh, I'm going to treat you like my queen. Amen. And she's my queen. Amen. Amen. She's my queen. That's right. That's we have four children. Amen. Thank God for them. All of them were not biological. Right. Two of them were adopted. Three of them, of course, were biologically brought here. Amen. My firstborn was stillbirth. Yeah. And so she never got to see her firstborn daughter, Loretta. But I'll meet her Amen. in eternal glory. Amen. 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 I'll meet her when the dead in Christ shall rise. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Sylvia has put some icing on my cake. Yeah. I, I just say that. I'm yeah. not afraid yeah. to say it. That's right. She plays that piano. Sometimes she hits the wrong key. I don't care. Yeah. I got music in my house. That's right. And I got music in my heart. Yes, Lord. And music in this life. Yes, amen. Lord. Because God gave me, yes. amen, a beautiful yes. woman. Amen. To walk with yes. me amen. during amen. these days. So uh, Jesus will meet every need that we have in life if we'll only believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But this thing about betrothal, what, what does it mean? You say that Joseph was betrothed to Mary. This was a firm commitment that Joseph made to this girl. I'm going to marry you. I'm not going to take advantage of you. And when Joseph discovered that uh, there was growth taking place, in the life of this girl he had pledged his life to, Joseph looked with suspicion, did he not? And yet the angel said to him, Joseph, fear not to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now, ladies, you have that on us. We, we can't conceive anything. Amen? <laughs> you have an exclusive rule in that area. <laughs> Am I talking right, Mr. Nelson? <laughs> Painful rule. Difficult rule. And uh, a commitment to stick with those children for the rest of their lives. And you don't just uh, give birth to a baby and walk away from it. When the baby comes, you stick there and you That's stay right. with him That's and right. you counsel him That's and right. you love him, you forgive yes. him, yes. you do whatever you can to support right. him. Amen. That's what giving birth is really all about. Yeah. James uses the same phrase in his epistle, uh, the epistle of James. And, one of these days, I'm just going to take the book of Romans. I'm going to go on radio with that book of Romans. Take the book of James. Take the book of 2 
Timothy, 1 Timothy. Your whole Bible is open for you to read it. Amen. Amen. And there are just a few little markers in the whole thing Amen. that will point out what the Bible is really all about. Amen. Some people carry it with them and never read it. <laughs> never, never read it. Never read it. Your therefores and wherefore and all that stuff, those are pointers in the Bible. Your ands mean an awful lot. But in Hebrew, you have more ands in Hebrew that, than what could ever show up, really, in your translation. Almost every phrase has a little vlog there that tells you, hey, this is another phrase in the Hebrew text. Now, I'm not an authority in Hebrew, but I am uh, grateful to God that God has allowed me to use my mind yeah. to try to understand the scriptures. Amen. Amen. And I tell you, you won't understand the scriptures without being blessed Amen. by God Almighty. Amen. 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 The word, all of the word, yes. yes, is God's word and God's message to us. So uh, I'm just honored to be here this morning. Amen. One of these days I'm going to get this stuff <laughs> taken care of, but nevertheless. Now, to be betrothed. Mm -hmm. One a young man had to come and bring a dowry. Mm -hmm. You say, what did I give for Sylvia? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I didn't pay Mr. Hines mm -hmm. a dowry. Mm -hmm. But in the days when the Bible was written, yeah. the father yeah. owned the family. Uh -huh. And the young man had to come to the father. And when he came to the father, the father would look at him and say, now, what kind of a dowry are you going to bring me? Yeah. Some of them were tough dowries. <laughs> I have these, you need to read it on your own. I can't do it all right here over the pulpit. Deuteronomy 28, 30. Uh, in one instance, the lady was pleased that the young man brought a good dowry because he wanted to marry her. And what did the dowry do? Well, I'll tell you what it did. Uh, it pointed us to the fact that God loves us so much until he will never forsake us in Hosea 2, 19 and 20. I will betroth you to me forever. God says, I love you. You are mine. I take you. I will never divorce you. Now, I know divorces are going on in today's world, and I'm not trying to throw a stone at people who have divorced uh, in life. But God says, I will never divorce you. And, and I, I sometimes jokingly tell my wife, honey, you can't get rid of me. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. I'm here. God put us together. Amen. And we're going to live our lives together. Amen? Amen. As believers in Jesus Christ. Amen and pour our lives into one another and build up one another, edify one another, yes. never to talk against one another, amen. never to, amen, climb down the backs of one another. Don't do that. Uh, Michelle, in the Old Testament, Saul's daughter, mm -hmm. you know, she saw David one day when they brought up the ark, and David, he just, he just went berserk, Bishop. Yeah. He, 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 just, he just went crazy. Yeah. You know, they're bringing up the ark and the people are marching and, hey, this is a wonderful time in Israel. And uh, David is just dancing before the Lord. He's just, he just jumping all over the place. And Michelle, Saul's daughter, looked out the window and said to him, Hi, I, I saw you showing off yourself before the maids here. You were mighty vile out there. David said, I, you thought I was vile? You just wait. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do in rejoicing over the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll be even more vile for Yahweh, my God. Tell the story, so be careful how you criticize your husband. Amen. Be careful how you take him apart. Right. But the dowry meant when David went up to uh, Saul and, and said, I, I want to take Michelle uh, as my wife. And Saul said, Hmm, you are David, right? Yeah. The boy that played on the on the harp. 
the boy that sang with the guitar yeah. on the backside of the desert. I've been looking at you, buddy. I'm going to set you up. I'll give you the shell if you will bring me 104 skins of the Philistines. That's all, that's all I want, just 100. Go out there and kill them. Bring me their foreskin, 100 of them. I know you'll be killed at this point. Now men, here's what I'm telling you. If you're gonna marry somebody, if you're gonna take somebody to be your wife, amen, you gotta be a strong man. Amen. You must be willing to uh, stand for the issues that are right in our world and in our society. You cannot be a whip. You cannot turn your back and run. If you're going to be a man, uh, David said, uh, well, if I want Michelle as my wife, I'll go get them. I don't know what your husband has done to prove to you, but I read one of the verses, and it's in the text that I give to you, where this young lady said, I feel so good that this young man was willing to pay this dowry for me. He's willing to do that sacrificing for me. And uh, if you're going to take a wife, be strong. Amen. Recognize that there may be Sometimes when you'll have to fight, when you need to defend the truth of the word of God, I want you to know uh, this diary I'm going to bring to your father and David brought it. Now, I don't know what the diary was that Joseph brought for Mary, but the text says that uh, they were engaged. And to be engaged meant that they were committed to one another for life until death do they part. There's only one thing that was withheld from this, and that was the intimacy of sexual relations. They could travel together, they could live together, they were husband and wife, but they had not gone through the wedding uh, procedure. So, what I'm saying is this. If you're going to take a wife, you need to be a strong man. You can't just be a wimp and roll over and somehow give up and quit. Right, right. And young ladies, let me say to you, yeah, let me say this to you. Don't just offer yourself to any young man simply because he whispers in your ear. You look at the young man and you say, there are some things that God requires in Amen. a marriage situation. Amen. And if we're going to honor the Lord mm -hmm. with our life, uh, sure, we'll get married. Yes. But don't come here praying up on me. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to get your thrills from me. <laughs> that doesn't work, brothers. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> come on, Pastor. Teach the word. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Don't put me out there. Don't throw me out to the dogs while you get your, you know, hello. <laughs> Am I talking vulgar here in the poor people? <laughs> Somehow we need to bring this right down to where we live. Yes, yes. Treat the girl with respect. Love her. Protect her. Don't go in after her until after. Amen. Amen. You've heard the man say, I do. Now, I know that's old-fashioned preaching today. And this, probably, this program is not probably going to be promoted uh, that awfully much because that's old style. So we need to go back to the book that was given to us by God. Yeah, we've all made mistakes, and I'm not saying punish yourself and go in a corner someplace if you didn't do that, but just ad admit to God, Lord, I was wrong. Please help me. Genesis 2.24. Yes, Lord. Amen? Yes. 
For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one. Now I read somebody, I heard somebody who used a strange interpretation of that verse. And the strange interpretation said, it's up to the man to follow the woman. Isn't that, that what the verse says? No. A man should leave father and mother and be joined to his wife. Leave your father, leave your mother, follow the wife. And buddy, that's where we are today. Yeah, we. Just follow the wife. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not what that verse means at all. No, that's right. God created Adam first. That's right. Get that right now. God created Adam first. You read it, Genesis 1:26 and 27. Come on, tell the story, Pastor. God gave the message to Adam, Genesis 2:15. Come on, telling him what to do and what he should say to his wife. Now somehow, when the devil gets involved there, it's going to be mixed up. When the devil gets involved. Eve came out and reported what she thought Adam said. Yeah, yeah, you, you shouldn't eat of that tree over there. But then she added to it, neither shall you touch it. And that was not according to the divine will, and the divine plan. And he says in Genesis 3, 6, I was deceived. The devil pulled the wool over my eyes when I disobeyed Adam and partook of the fruit and then gave it to Adam. And Adam's standing right by his side. Oh, honey, I'll follow you. <laughs> Wherever you go, I'll follow. And the Apostle Paul comes along with that same verse in 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 9. And Paul, in that passage, mm -hmm. is interpreting Genesis 1, 2, and 3 wow. under the authority of the Holy Spirit. Right. Paul was an apostle. Right. He spoke for the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And Paul says in that verse, I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, That's right. but that she becomes a learner. Come on. She becomes a student. Not yes. that she can't learn and teach, but she can teach women. women. She can teach boys right. and girls. Right. She can teach in the home, right. but she is not supposed to stand up and teach in the church. Right. Hello now. All right. I'm gonna I know I'm going to need a pulpit next week. I suffer not a woman to teach, Amen. nor to usurp authority over the man. And one female preacher says that word means, and I've read the same document that she's read, mm -hmm. I suffer not a woman to domineer over a man. That's the way the women preachers take that verse. But that is not according to the context. It's not according to the context. God knew what he was doing yes, he when he created the family. Yes, he, did. Yes, he, did. he knew what he was doing when he created Adam. Yes. He knew exactly what he was doing when he took Eve out of Adam. Yes. Amen? Amen? Now, God is not uh, uh, the person who can make a mistake. I had a friend, uh, he was a member of this church, maybe he is now sometime. He said, I got another interpretation of that verse. And I'm saying, where'd you get it from? Did you get it from the Bible? It didn't come out of the Bible. Paul not only said that in 1 Timothy 2, but he also said it in 1 Corinthians 14, 34. He says it over and over again. He said, uh, sister, if you really want to know something in church, instead of standing up over here, I'm going to speak in church, blah, 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 blah. All out of order. Let everything be done decently and be done in order. So if you want to know something, go home and ask your husband. Now, brothers, that puts a big load up on us. 
Hello? And Sylvia says, oh, so what does that mean? I start sweating. <laughs> Where's my text? <laughs> Let me make sure now I'm leading you right here. <laughs> yeah, brothers, we have to know what is going on. We have to know the word. And if you're going to really know the word, brothers, you have to have a library. Hello? Amen. I go sometimes into preacher's office and you know what they have there? <laughs> you all should stop making me laugh. <laughs> they have an almanac. <laughs> study, study from the almanac, maybe one old Bible. <laughs> no resources, no commentaries. No indication that you've studied the word of God and you mean business because God has given you this assignment to study. We need to know it. Amen? And, and, and so my, my encouragement is, look, spend money to buy yourself some good books. And then take time to read them. And take time to get under somebody who has spent time right. in the Word of God Amen. so that you can learn. Amen. Amen. I, I feel sad. I, I do. Mm -hmm. I really do. There are men looking for pulpits today. And they'll go any place where they can think that a pulpit is open. Right. To on. try to get somebody to accept you as a pastor. If you're going to be accepted as a pastor, you got to go to the scriptures yeah. and learn the word of God and see what God says about every text of scripture, every aspect of life. Yeah. You've got to get there and you have to know it before you think somebody else is going to follow you. Yeah. Follow you where? Into a ditch? I'm going to order you back here for yeah, next Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, follow me. Follow me where? Come on. <laughs> Over Niagara Falls. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Jump in the St. Lawrence Seaway and just float right on down the St. Lawrence Seaway and go over Niagara Falls. That's all the place you're going. Amen. Listen, brothers, we have to, if we're going to leave, we've got to know. We got to know the word of God. And don't just assume that I've got all of the answers. You've got to know what God says in his word. And listen, I'm not saying you have to know Greek. I'm not saying you have to know Hebrew. But if you can learn it, why don't you? If you can learn it now, God has given you something up here. The little gray matter. And, and we're told now that you only use 10% of it. That's what they Even Albert Einstein didn't use it all. Why won't you use your mind to understand what God says? He says you're going to be judged by it. Your eternity is going to depend upon what God has said, not upon what some preacher said. Your eternity, your eternal life is dependent upon the word of the living God. So open the book, open. turn to the book, yes. turn to the book at your bedside, yes. amen? Yes, Lord. Now, this thing about uh, being a person who is betrothed, it simply means, yes, I have committed my life to this girl. Yeah. I'm going to protect her, I'm going to live for her, I'm going to be a man of integrity. I will never cheat her. I will never abuse her. I will never talk behind her back. I want her to know that she is an equal partner in my life. Not the head. Oh no. Not the head, honey. You can be an equal partner. That's what First Peter says, that your prayers be not hindered. That you respect her and you love her and you pray with her and you share your life with her. She is not your head. She is not your boss. And basically, brothers, you are not her boss either. Amen. Guess who her boss is? Jesus. 
Jesus. <laughs> now, if we can come to agreement on that one, Jesus is the boss, yes. and that way I have that triangle here. Yes. You know, husband here, wife there, but Jesus up here. Yes, that's right. And as long as I can look to Jesus, oh, that Jesus, yes. which way should I go? Oh, to yes. the right or to the Hallelujah. left? God, show me yes. your family will work out okay. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Come Amen. On. Yeah. So this thing of marriage is important. Be a man of integrity. Mm -hmm. Be a man of responsibility. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, the Bible says that uh, Leviticus 19.20, whoever lies carnally with a woman who is betrothed to a man as a con concubine, and who has not at all been redeemed, there will be serious punishment there. Yeah. I, I think I've said it about as much as I need to say, other than, other than to bring us to where we are now. Yeah. Yeah. Girls learn early in life. If I don't get this man, he may not be here. Yeah. And so they offer themselves, thinking you're going to catch a man. Right. Right. Yeah, right. You won't catch him that way, honey. No, right. no, no, you won't catch him that way. Uh, whatever is the prize product, mm -hmm. people are willing to pay for it. Amen. And if you say to him, uh, brother, if that's what you want, you need to go down on the Amen. avenue someplace. Amen. There may be some women on the avenue who will satisfy you. That's right. That's right. But as for me, mm -hmm. I belong to Jesus. Amen. Amen. He is my Lord and yes, he is my Lord. master and I'm going to honor him. Yes, Lord. Say, so, well, you may never get married. So that may be, if that is the case. But to honor the Lord yes. and live for the Lord yes. and serve the Lord and yes. please the Lord with your life yes. is the best possible thing yes. that you could ever do yes. for yes. the Lord. That's it. That's it. Yes. Yes, Lord. I love the Lord and I yes. lift my voice yes. to worship him. To give him the glory and yes, the honor. Yes, yes. I acknowledge him in all of my aspects of life. I don't care what I have done. I have done it because I love Jesus. Yes. And when you serve in the church or in whatever other uh, social organization you come to, when you serve with that motive, you will never be disappointed. Amen. You'll never suffer heartache Amen. when you give your life Amen. in the service of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now in closing as I draw your attention to the picture I'm saying to you young men and women older and, and younger Matthew 7 24 talks about the wise man and the foolish man the wise man did what? Builds his house yeah. upon the rock. Yeah. You build your house on Jesus yes. and it's going to be fine. Right, right. That rock will hold that. Yes, 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 we sing a song, uh, Brother Howard. Yes, on Christ, the solid, the solid rock, 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 I stand. I stand. All other ground is sinking, sand. is sinking sand. That's what it is. Now you can build your house on the sand if you want to. That's all of the trends that are going on in our world. It's, yep. it's a nightclub. It's getting my own way and yep. having my own pleasure. Yep. And uh, you can build your house on the sand if you want to. But I want to tell you something. It will sink.
it will sink. I want you to build on Christ. And how do you build on Jesus? <laughs> For God so loved the world. That little term there, hosta, only used in the Gospel of John once in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. I hope you trusted him as your savior. No matter where you're coming from, whatever your history background is, right. God offers forgiveness yeah, to you. Yes, he does. Boy, that is something. Afiebi, you know, I dismiss this, God says. I'll dismiss your past. Yes. I'll offer you forgiveness. Yes. And then he says in, in Ephesians chapter 4, I want you to forgive the way Christ forgave. Yes. yes. Your forgiveness should be based on Christ's yes. forgiveness. Yes, yes, yes. You'll be clean. Eyesight. Yes. We'd love to have you as a member of this local church. Amen. Amen. We'd love to have you, your name on the roll, because we want to be able to call on you, and you will help us and encourage us Amen. along the way. So, if you're not a member of this body, hey, the door is open. Please Amen. come. <laughs> Please come. Amen. Amen. Father, we bless your name. Okay. Ask you for your mercy and grace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come this morning if you will. Yes. The invitation is in your bulletin. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. That's 107. If you don't have that, you can turn to 1 John 3 1. Let's all stand as we sing and respond to what the Lord has been saying to you. Yeah. 